Hello heroes, this is Owen Holt with another Storyline tutorial. Um, I know that there was a recent challenge on doing progress bars and uh, in fact somebody else just posted something in the community about course progress and I, I thought I'd, I've been wanting to do this for a while so I thought I would uh, take a stab at it myself. <clears throat> and as I looked around on the internet I came across in one of my favorite sites, uh, w3schools.com Bootstrap. Bootstrap was something I wasn't really familiar with, and essentially Bootstrap is like a library of CSS and um, different classes and tools and things that people can use to create some rapid development of HTML. And one of the things that they have is progress bars. And I wondered if I could take advantage of that to create a progress bar within Storyline, and sure enough, this is what I came up with, and you can see the bootstrap progress bar up here. It's animated with the little green stripes that go across. <clears throat> and rather than progressing through a course just to make this simple and, and demonstrate it all on one slide, I have some buttons here that can increase the progress. And as possible, you may even use this within a slide where uh, a user is working towards a goal, and if they take certain actions, they work away from the goal. And so you can see I did a couple of things. I changed the color of the progress bar, and I have a mechanism to increase or decrease progress as they either go forward or move backward. And it's set with limits. Obviously, you can't go to a negative number. Uh, you can see I'm keeping track down here of a couple of variables. You wouldn't show this to a user, but again, this is just part of how I troubleshoot my projects. So I can see a progress um, variable, and I can see the color variable here. And as I increase, I can see I'm jumping up by five at a time. Um, that doesn't have to be the mechanism. With the JavaScript that I'm going to show you here in a moment, you could set the value to a specific number if you wanted to. So if they complete something that's difficult, they could jump from 25% complete all the way up to 80. <clears throat> but again, just to keep it simple, I have it progressing and decreasing in increments of five. And again, that color switching as I change. So how did I do that? Well, the first thing is to learn a little bit about Bootstrap. So on the progress bars, as I scrolled through and, and read about them, I can see they had a basic progress bar. Um, they had a progress car bar with a label, which I chose not to use. <clears throat> you can see different colors, and those colors are based on a class associated with the progress bar. So this is within the cascading style sheets that come with the Bootstrap library. And so you can choose success, info, warning, danger. Um, I'm obviously toggling between a success and a danger. And they have examples of those styles, uh, or of the, the JavaScript here. I'm sorry, not JavaScript, of the actual HTML code. Uh, that you would use to, to implement those bars. And you can see they have striped progress bars, and then they have stripes where they're active, and they have stacked. So I'm using the active progress bar, and I'm using the class of success and completed. And um, this is where I got all of the information that I needed, was here on W3Schools. All the information that I needed for the progress bar itself. Now one thing that you'll notice when you do the try it yourself there's all of this additional information here that are, <clears throat> deal with bootstrap. So there's um, and this is required for those bootstrap uh, elements to work whether you're using the um, progress bar or any of the other things that are listed over here, the alerts or buttons or button groups, etc. You have to have that in your HTML. And there are a couple of ways of going about this. One is to just, every time you publish, go in and add that to the, to the file or use a JavaScript solution, which of course is what, what I chose to do. So let's, let's look at my storyline file. So the very first thing that I'm doing is on a, the slide, I have a trigger here, execute JavaScript. And if we look at the script, this looks pretty messy and complicated, but I'm going to walk you through it because it's really not all of that bad. 
I'm going to comment out things. So if you download my file, you'll see um, my comments here. Load required bootstrap references into a variable to facilitate appending the HTML player document. All that really means is this is that script that I told you was required. Um, I copied it. So from the meta name all the way down to here, I copied it directly off the W3 site. I got rid of any page breaks, so this is all just a single line of code, which uh, for those of you that know a little bit about HTML, those line breaks are really just for your own benefit, but when you're loading it into a variable, you want to get rid of those. So um, I have my variable append header, and in that variable, I loaded all of the HTML script that I need in the header. Once I do that, then I want to actually append the document. So I'm going to use a little jQuery. I'm going to locate the head of the document, and I'm going to append it with everything that's within the variable that I just created. <clears throat> so that takes care of all of this stuff here. So I don't need the meta character set. That's already in my document. But everything else here, I'm adding it to the head of the document. Now I need to load the progress bar code. So if we come back to the W3C, W3Schools site, <clears throat> here's my code right here, except that 40%. You could leave that in there, but it becomes a little more difficult to update, and you'll see that in a little bit. But I'm just taking from the div class progress through the divs. I'm changing a couple of things. So one, I added a width to the progress because I don't want anything this long in my storyline file. And I'm adding a couple of other um, elements to position it correctly on the page. So you'll, you'll see that when we look at the code. If I jump back to my storyline file now. You can see I have, again, I'm setting up a variable. I'm declaring a variable progress bar, and I'm setting it equal to everything that I want in there. So the first is the div class progress. That's straight from this, the W3Schools side. But then I'm going to give it a width property, and I want it centered in my player across that top bar. So I'm doing a position absolute. I'm going to set the margin to auto, and then I'm setting a right zero, left zero, top zero, and bottom zero. And all of that is going to center it in the middle and between the top and the bottom also in the middle. So that's some code that I added that wasn't on the W3Schools site, um, but the rest of this is the same. The div class is the progress bar, progress bar success. Progress bar success is the class that says this is green. It's striped. That's another class coming from the cascading style sheets um, in Bootstrap. And then active is the thing that animates those stripes. I'm adding, and this again is not on the W3 school site, but I'm adding an ID called my progress. And that's so that I can find this later with my, my buttons uh, more easily. The role, all of the rest of this is copied, except for the value now. They had a value now of 40. They also have um, an aria value or style width of 40%. So those things I, um, I changed to 0, 0, because I want my starting value to be, you know, they haven't made any progress at the beginning. Then I'm going to add the code to the HTML player. So once I've loaded all of that into a single variable, then I'm going to go and look at my document and find the presentation title. And I'm going to place everything in that progress bar variable after it. And that's just going to write the code into the, into the HTML5 page. That's a lot. <laughs> but most of this you can copy and paste. Um, the pieces that, that I um, indicated you might want to change, um, you know, you can look at that. The mechanism to actually change it. So let's look at the JavaScript on the button itself. So a couple of things. First of all, I have two variables. One is color, one is progress. The color 
has a default value of green. You're going to see where later I change that to red. It's really going to toggle back and forth between those two things, green and red. And that's so I can check to see when it need, what the current color is and if it needs to change. And then my progress starts at zero. This is going to be numeric. So the first thing that happens when I click a button is it adds five, right? You can use any mechanism that you want. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, you may want to not set it as an increment. You may want to, instead of adding it, you may want to actually set the value. And that's fine. Anything that you want to do, any trigger, anything to adjust that variable, you can do. I did set a limit, uh, so we can adjust that variable upward as long as it's less than 100. And on the other button, it's very similar. I'm going to subtract as long as it's greater than zero. So I have a limit of zero and 100. And that's because my progress bar itself it goes from 0% up to 100%. So those limits match my, my percentages. When I click a button, it's going to execute JavaScript. The JavaScript, again, I've tried to comment this out. Um, the first thing we're going to do is connect to the Storyline player. So those of you that have used some JavaScript are going to be familiar with this variable player equals get player. I'm going to pull in my two variables, uh, progress and color from Storyline, and then use those in the JavaScript below. The first thing I want to do is check the color of the bar and then change it if, if it needs to be changed. So I've got a toggle color function here. And I'm using some jQuery. And basically, it's going to pull in the class and look at the class, uh, the current class, or toggle it from the current class to progress bar success if it's danger. And it'll pull it in and toggle the class to progress bar danger if it's success. So this just toggles between those two classes, progress bar success, progress bar danger. And if you remember, the JavaScript code that I put in initially is progress bar success to set it as green. So that's what it starts out as. Then I only execute that function if bar color, which is my variable up here that I pulled from Storyline to get the color. So if the bar color is equal to red, toggle color. So in other words, if it's red, it's going to toggle it to green. If it's green, it's not going to do anything. It's only if the color is red. So uh, it defaults as green. If I start out, it's already green. It's going to ignore that function. If I've used the button down and changed it to red, then when I hit the green button, it'll see that it's red, and it will change it to green. So the last thing is update the progress bar with a new value. So I'm going to pull in that value from progress bar. Remember, we, we added 5 to it, and then I'm going to pull it in here and see that additional or that new number. Then I'm going to locate my progress bar. I'm going to find the, the CSS associated with it. I'm going to find width, and I'm going to change it to my progress, so that value, and add a percent sign after it because in the code, it's 40% or 10% or whatever else. And then I'm also going to change the attribute, the aria value now, equal to that. So there are two places in the code where I'm going to, to change and update things. And I'll show you that here in just a moment. And then I want to be sure that the variable for color is showing as green. Because I'm clicking the green button, I want to make sure that it's green. Um, and that is, if I've just hit the red button before this, it'll be set to red. You'll see the code is very similar. Um, and I want to make sure that it's green so that I'm not toggling the code back and forth. If I, if I hadn't put those parameters in there, anytime I clicked a button, it would go back and forth, red, then green, then red, then green. But I only want it to be green the first time I hit the green button and then stay green until I hit the red button. I'm kind of rambling. I hope that makes sense. Uh, hopefully it will as you look at the file and, and go through it. So if I look at the red button, you'll notice the JavaScript is identical, except that I'm if the bar color is green, then I'm going to toggle the color. So when I'm clicking the red button, I want to check and see if my, if my bar is green. And if it's green, I want to change it to red. And then I want to set the player variable color to red to indicate that I'm now uh, showing a red bar. Other than that, everything else 
is the same. I'm going to pull the variables in. I'm going to update the value of the progress bar, the width, and the ARIA value now that are in the code from Bootstrap, and, and that's it. So there you go. If we publish this now, so I'm going to publish this, and we'll just look at it. Um, I'm going to publish it for the web this time, and we'll look at it in just a regular browser. View the project. Here it is. And what I'm going to do is just open up the developer window so that you can see um, a little bit of what's happening here. Um, and let me hide the console drawer here so that you can see a little bit more of, of what's happening. So the first thing that it did, you'll notice if I come up here to the head of the document, you see that um, bootstrap. So those links, the meta name, the viewport, all of that was added into the document automatically. That's all up there in the head of the document. I didn't have to manually add that in, nor will I ever have to manually add that in every time I publish. I'm just front loading it by using some JavaScript. And then I want you to notice when I click the, the buttons here, well, let's find those elements first. Um, they are down in here. Actually, the element that we want to find is this. So here's our, our progress bar, and I've got that width of 200. It's centered, and I'm going to expand that so you can see the progress bar itself underneath. You'll notice right now we click the button. It has a value of 5, and it has the width of 5%. Watch what happens as I click this. You'll notice a little purple indicating what's changing. So watch over here when I click the button. So those values change to 15 and the width to 15%. Now watch what happens when I click the red button. Right, watch over here to see what changes. So it updated the class. And you'll notice it changed it to um, progress bar danger. And if I click the green button, it's changing it back to progress bar success. So that's changing and controlling the color up here. So now watch up here on the bar itself. It's green. Now it's red. And again, I'm adding values here and here, and I'm subtracting values in those same places. And you'll notice that the class only changes the first time that I click the opposite button. So I'm on red right now. When I click green, that class is going to change. And now the class is not going to change until I click the red bar or red button. And then the class will change. But subsequent clicks on the class don't change it. Okay, so that's that's essentially it. Uh, and again, this is just a, you can use this as a progress bar through a course. Um, you could use this as a progress bar for some task within a slide. I mean, the the sky's the limit. Anything that you want to do with it, uh, of course, um, those options are available to you. Um, I've posted this. I'll post the file as both um, Storyline 360 and Storyline 3. Um, so that you'll have that regardless of which of those that you're on. For Storyline 2, this is also possible. Um, I think some of the coding would have to be adjusted a little bit anytime you're manipulating things in the player. The HTML5 for Storyline 2 is slightly different, um, but the concepts are basically the same. So hopefully you can, you can follow along or figure it out or, or contact me directly if you, if you uh, need some support there. Um, thank you for your time. I hope this has been helpful. And once again, happy coding.